theology. And a lot of times I meet people who want to throw away covenant theology and say we're under dispensational theology. And then other people that want to say there's no dispensations and they're all covenant theology. And the, the other point that I think is important is uh, we can't sit here and say, well, we're under grace, let's throw law out. Because very clearly, law does apply in our life. If you don't believe so, go jump off a 10-story building. You'll find out how quickly law applies. The law of gravity is exactly. applying all constantly, right? A circle has 360 degrees. Whether you like it or not. Exactly. <laughs> sure. So, but, but law does not affect our justification. Okay? Um, but if we keep certain laws, we might live a lot longer and be healthier. Right. Okay? And, and so we are not justified by keeping that law. But that's why I say, although a lot of these concepts in the straw man are there in the law, Old Testament, they still apply because we have not ultimately uh, become totally sanctified yet. Mm -hmm. Someday when we reach total sanctification, none of this will be uh, relevant as opposed to uh, the law and we will uh, have new bodies, we won't be able to sin and things like that. Um, so I guess that that's the, the, the basis for uh, redeeming the straw man. Well, tell me, you, you mentioned an illustration that seems to make a lot of sense about McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Tell us that about, what about yeah. McDonald's. Yeah, that, that's pretty interesting. Okay, If we were to go out today and just start building a McDonald's franchise, but we never paid our license fees and we never told McDonald's about it, just we, did it. we just figured they got you know millions of stores they'll never know. We could probably you know get away with that and keep going and sticking the money in our pocket. Now most Christians I know would probably say, "Ooh, John, that's very unethical, All right?" But as long as we didn't get caught, we could get away with it. Okay. In essence, that's what's happened to us. They have created a straw man and they are using this entity. And as long as we don't show up to say, hey, you can't do that, they're going to go keep on using that. Okay, so since they created this and used your name. That's right. If, as long as you don't say anything, well. They, they keep, they're going. keep using it. Sure. And, and it gets worse than that because we take ourselves out of a, a position where we are accountable to God and we come on down and we say, we will I'll become that person for you. And we take ourselves out of a position of being their master and put ourselves in a position of being becoming the servant. the servant. Have churches done the same thing by becoming incorporated? That's a very interesting issue. Uh, this the, will the 501c3 corporation. There's a uh, U.S. Supreme Court case named Hale v. Hinkle. And in that court case, they basically stated that a corporation is a creature of the state. Okay. All right. Let's follow this analogy through um, with an illustration. Uh, let's take your phone number, for instance. Okay. Who owns that phone number? Good question. I guess I have to pay every month for it, so the, the company owns it. So the I'm phone renting. company, basically. Yeah. If, if we stop meeting our contractual obligation, mainly, paying our phone bill, They'll take it away and give it to somebody else. They, exactly. Sure, right. And you'll see how long that phone right. number is yours. <laughs> 30 days. All right? So the same thing with a corporation. That corporation is a creature of the state. Okay? You have to apply to the state. Okay? You fill out all these articles in the corporation, and it has to be follow the guidelines that the state sets. All right? Once they get these articles in the corporation, and you pay a fee to the state, they will stamp that thing in, and, and you become a corporation. All right? But they've got some... You just like that phone bill, they've got some guidelines you got to follow. Well, you got to file this tax return every year. You got to, you know, uh, file your, your minutes. You've got to pay a, a fee every year to use that corporation. And if you don't pay your fee every year, you can't even defend a lawsuit that comes along. So a corporation is the creature of a state, and it does not exist as a matter of right. See, God never created corporations but it is down in this world existing as an entity of privilege. And who ultimately owns that corporation? Or the state. Whoever created it. The state, the state created it, so they own it. If it's 
Utah or California or Florida. And the, the stockholders basically have a beneficial interest in the use of that corporation. Very interesting. So a 501c3 is nothing more than a, another type of a corporation. The state owns it. So now, when they come in, and I believe, Ken, that this is just around the corner, and a lot of churches are going to get really caught off guard by this, but I think they're going to be in very shortly saying, well, you have to have, if, if your church has 3,000 members, you're going to have to have an equal pro rata share of queer ministers on staff. Sure. And if you don't have a queer minister, uh, they could revoke that tax status. And you want to say, well, man, isn't that unconstitutional? No, not really. They created it. Yep, and it's just like that, that scenario with McDonald's, okay? Um, if you want to sell uh, Grandma Hovine's one-pound hamburgers, you can do that. But once you enter into a franchise agreement with McDonald's, you can't sell Grandma Hovine's hamburgers. You have to sell what they tell me to sell. You have to, yeah. uh, exactly. So, so if we have left our position with God and we uh, have elected to become this corporate franchise, and they say you will have queer ministers. At that point in time, I think it, as Christians, it becomes a matter of are we going to honor our contracts? Yes. Yeah. So I think it's more important to watch what we're doing and be careful the contracts we get into if we don't want to have to follow the terms of those contracts later. Well, see, in Proverbs chapter six, it says, um, if you've stricken your hand with a stranger, you know you made a contract. Mm -hmm. Try to get out of it. Do your best to undo that, right. especially an unending contract. If I say, John, I'm going to hire you for $10 an hour to work for me, well, I probably should have an end to that, you know, to work for me until this project is completed. And in case it's taking longer than I thought, then we have a cutoff deadline of, yeah. you know. Unending contracts are dangerous, you know. you got to be very cautious about that. And Proverbs chapter 6 warns us about that. So I get, lot, I get some flack from other Christians because uh, we have not incorporated. I am not 501c3. I don't want to take... God told me to go preach his word, okay? Right. I don't need the state's permission to do what God already told me to do. And people who have taken the state's permission look at me like I'm some, some kind of odd duck, like why aren't you incorporated and why haven't you jumped through all these hoops? Well, John Bunyan spent years in jail over this very issue. He refused to take a state license to preach. Right. The government said, you must get a license to preach. He said, I'm sorry. If I do that, that's putting God under you guys. I can't put God under you. Amen. And so I don't understand why some Christians get bent out of shape with me about that. Uh, I'm trying to do what God told me to do. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a, another interesting thing. we got these uh, little citizens' rule books here. And in this rule book, there's a story, um, you know, give me liberty, give me death, about uh, Patrick Henry was shocked and he served on the jury here in this country around 1775 where they were wanting a man to take a license to preach and he was a juror and he says no way you can't do that and they wound up at throwing him in jail as a juror until he they weren't going to let him out until he agreed to find the guy guilty and he was willing to stay there in jail and lose his business a lot of Christians might say, well, how, what kind of a testimony is that? He wound up in jail. But still, he did the right thing. Right. And, and finally, the, the, he was covered in his own thesis. He, they, had, they finally let him out because he, he wouldn't find the guy guilty. I'm going to die here. He's not guilty. And that's an, another sad truth is that the judges are telling everybody when you serve on a jury that it has to be unanimous one way or another. And the truth is, if one juror says the guy's not guilty, there's your reasonable doubt. That's exactly correct. Okay, one juror says no. And a juror can do that if he thinks the law is unjust. That's right. It doesn't matter. It, okay, so you pass a law, you can't spit on the sidewalk. Somebody spits on the sidewalk. He goes to court. You know, gets tried. It's obvious 